good morning i think today is day seven or is it day six i think it's day six okay it's day six thank you for coming back and happy wednesday let us jump into this devotion with prayer first and go through it together okay Heavenly Father, thank you for blessing us with another day, a beautiful Wednesday that it is in Cape Town. I pray for each and every person that is listening to the sound of my voice, that we may stop what we're doing. I pray against any distraction, um, any form of anything that will get in the way of you working within us, in our minds and in our hearts in this moment, including myself. I pray against any form of distraction, anything, Lord, that's going to be in my mind that is not supposed to be in my mind. Holy Spirit, I pray and I invite you with us as you hear, Lord. I just really pray that um, we understand, that you help us to understand this verse and, and the scripture and most importantly, how to apply it in our lives today. Father, you're so merciful and gracious to teach us. You're so patient with us to give us understanding and wisdom. So even in this time, Holy Spirit, we pray and that you may help us understand, you may help us hear your word, that we may be able to be those who apply it, not only just hear it, but put our faith behind it, to read more of your word, study more of the Bible. Um, but if this is the only word we'll hear today, Holy Spirit, let it have impact in our lives. Let it have a, a, a meaning in our day. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let's get into it. Alrighty, I do want to share this morning I was struggling. I think since this week started, I've been struggling with the devotions. It's a little bit different than when I do them by myself. Um, I don't know why, but like I know the benefits of them in my life and going through these devotions. I'm just struggling to see the same impact that they have in my life in you guys's. Um, I see the comments, I see like six to 10 comments, or I will see the views aren't the same as vlogs. And I get it, not all my like um, followers are believers and it's like not everybody likes devotions. Um, but I don't know, man, like I think that the, couple of days I, I was just a little bit down because I was just like Lord I'm, I'm maybe not portraying or explaining these devotions how I should be because they're very impactful in my life when I do them off camera so I really hope and pray that um, that's not um, going to demotivate me over time I'm really trying to hold myself accountable because this is a promise I made to God and maybe my intentions were not pure going into them i was looking at something to share for everybody but not looking at what the lord is saying to me about the verses how to apply them in my life maybe that's why i don't know but i really pray that um even if the response is not what i expect that the impact is what god wants it to be okay so please pray before devotion you can pray now <laughs> All right, today's devotion is in Romans chapter 15, verse 7. Accept one another then, just as Christ accepted you, in order to bring praise to God. Amen. I'll read it again. Romans chapter 15, verse 7. Accept one another then, just as Christ accepted you, in order to bring praise to God. I never thought about accepting people for who they are and not judging them and not blaming them, not complaining about them, could actually bring praise to God. Can you dip that for a sec? Praising God is how we live our lives. Praising God is uh, our worship to him. Praising God is our tithing to him. Praising God is what we say with our, our, our lips, our mouth. Um, but I never thought um, accepting others as who they are, who God has made them to be, not judging them, not blaming them, not complaining about them, not, um, you know, gossiping about them. And just loving people could be something that is a form of praise to God. Isn't that powerful? 
isn't that nice you know when sometimes you're just like lord i don't know what to say but thank you or i just want to praise you you can praise god by accepting the people in your life and loving the people in your life that is a form of praise to god i didn't realize that um i'll read the devotion <laughs> with all our mistakes with all our faults in our mess with holes with our socks and smelly feet with flabby middles and jiggly thighs me <laughs> with annoying laughs and whiny complaints me with our worst monday mornings in our moments of darkness in our deep down doubts in depression in manic wheels of thoughtless activity caught in our temptations wrestling with questions we can't even answer in our ignorance our arrogance in our pride stuck in our rust rejected damaged sinners this is how christ accepted us and he didn't just let us in the door to stand around and be ignored he opened up his heart and enveloped us in his arm of love and embraced every bit of who we are all the parts we like and all the parts we hate about ourselves this is how christ accepted us all the parts that we love and all the parts that we hate about ourselves christ accepted us as that amen and that is how we are to accept one another i think another thing is we see parts in people that we hate and we want to change them instead of love on them and accept them and realize that we don't change people we are unable to give salvation we are unable to transform people or change people and god is doing that for us so he loves us enough to do that for us and he will love that next person enough and and loves them the same way that he loves you you know to change them if they need to change to transform them if they need to transform but we are so easy to judge we are so easy to disregard ignore people that have sinned just like us our brothers and sisters whether christian or not believers or not we're so easy to just disregard other people because they have traits that we don't like and yet we have traits that god doesn't like every day and yet he loves us every day amen where was i this is how christ accepted us and that is how we are to say accept one another no holding back no shame no blame no requirements just love i think that's important the no requirements part i don't know why but like in Ngati people need to act a certain way in order for us to love them and i think maybe this is a society thing where it's like um be careful who you trust or be careful who you put in your circle or as all these requirements or like um i'll go i'll even go to say things like men are trash or like don't like like trust the rock then trust a casa man or all these other things that society social media puts out there are requirements in order for us to love one another and that's not the case people don't have to do people don't have to deserve your love i think that's the right thing to say people don't have to deserve your love god calls us to love one another God calls us to love each other with no requirement to love believers to love non-believers all humanity God calls us to love to show love to love them in our hearts genuinely so no blame no regrets no shame no embarrassment no requirements I think is the biggest thing for me that I'm getting today that we ought to love people with no requirement amen which I think is the opposite of what society culture tells us. Just love. <laughs> Can we actually do this? Can we really look past each other's flaws and find the grace to accept one another in the name and in the example of Christ? We can, but only through him. Amen. I think that's also very important. We can love other people. We can show the love Christ showed to the church and showed to everybody else to uh, God's love to you know the Israelites the pagans and everybody and even Jesus loving each and every person those who thought they knew 
um, the word or thought they knew he, they knew God more than him. Um, and those who didn't, the tax collectors, everybody that was invisible, sin to the outsider. Jesus loved everybody, loved all of us, all of them and loves all of us. So we can, but because we're sinners, we need Jesus Christ, who's already done it, who already does it, loves us, all of us, to help us do this. Because we do see flaws when we look at people and it's hard to love them when we see those flaws. But God loves us without flaws, so we need help. We need help. We need the Holy Spirit to help us with what to say in those situations, what not to say, um, how to show love physically, whether it's a hug, whether it's a text, whether it's a call, um, and those type of things, whether it's a check-in, all those type of things. On Sunday, we did our pastor's appreciation, which was beautiful. And at the end of it, in one of his replies, he said a couple of things in his replies that I found very um reassuring he spoke about how he doesn't want to be praised and this is not to praise him we praise god he's not trying to be worshipped we, we, he's to point us to god and he's not god you know and he doesn't want to ever um be in a position yes he's appreciative of the appreciation but not ever be in a position where he is worshipped Okay. That is one thing, which I think was very important because someone was coming to church for the first time that Sunday could have been like, what is going on? Uh, the second thing he said, I think is very powerful because I stood up for this one. He said, I appreciate you guys for honoring me um, as your pastor, um, as someone who teaches you, you know, the word. However, there are people in your life that you also need to honor. It doesn't make sense for a Christian to be comfortable to honor their pastor at church, yet there's a family member they are refusing to honor. There is a friend that they're refusing to honor. And I thought that was very powerful because we easily, easily, um, we're very selective in who we honor, who we love, who we, we show grace to, as if there's a prerequisite, like requirement for that. God doesn't, does, the Bible doesn't tell us that there is. The Bible even talks about honoring our, our parents. It talks about honoring those in higher position in government, even whether we agree with them or not. Um, so I think it's very important that we learn, that I learn how to honor people in my life how to love people in my life already that exist, but also how to love and honor people in general that I'm still to meet. And for God to help me to not be prideful enough to be selective and God to help me to, to remember the same grace that's given to me to give that to everybody else. Yeah, let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this word. Thank you for this reminder. Thank you for calling us out um, because I know I do this. I'm very selective as to who I love, who I show my love to. I know that I'm very judgmental at times. I am um, very picky at times. Um, I complain a lot and so many other things. But Heavenly Father, I bring my life to you today as a child of God and wanting to be more and more like you, Father. Be more and more like Jesus who lived on earth and exampled all of this, who loved so much of us. Your Bible says, God so loved the world, the whole world, not because of when we, were un we are unclean, we are sinners, we make mistakes. And yet, for God so loved the whole world that you sent your son and your son loved us. Um, as he was here. So Heavenly Father, teach us daily how to love those around us. Teach us daily how to love ourselves. Teach us not to be self-centered, but just to love ourselves, appreciate and give thanks for um, who you are in our lives and who we are as, as a people. Um, but help us, Lord God Almighty, to look at others and exude the love Christ has for his church. I pray all of this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, I hope today you show somebody love in a way that they receive love. If you don't know how they receive love, that's okay. I pray that when you have an opportunity to not show love, whether you're angry, upset, confused, frustrated, annoyed, that you choose to love today. All right. Have an amazing day. Be blessed. I love you lots.
Bye.